Hey everybody, it's DJ with DAS Companies, Inc. Uh, I hope you guys are staying safe during the pandemic. Uh, keep in mind that we are open and we're here for you if you need us. Uh, I want to take some time uh, while I'm working from home to highlight some great products. Today we're going to be checking out the DS3P from Directed Electronics. I've got one here in front of me with a few accessories. Let's take a moment to check it out. Alright, so before I even unbox the DS3 Plus, uh, it is in our system as DS3P, P is for Plus. The only difference on the Plus versus the normal DS3 is a normal DS3 uh, does not have the high current relays built in. Um, so for many applications, that's going to be the way to go. However, if you're only going to stock one, this is the one to stock because the plus can be used in either application. You can use that when you need the high current or if you don't need the high current. Um, another cool thing is before we even open the box is on the side, you'll notice a little port here. Uh, that's so you can hook up your XK loader uh, right to your laptop and actually load the firmware before you even open it up from the box. This is great in a situation where you have you know, Black Friday events and you're, you want to have one person on the bench prepping everything, he can just sit there and, and uh, load all the firmware, uh, mark it on the box for what it is, and it's ready to rock. Okay, enough about that. Let's open it up and check it out. Okay, so this is the unit itself. One of the awesome things I really love about this unit is all these all the uh, wire ports come out on the same side. A lot of other remote starts have uh, a high current relay on this side and some of the other wires. There's wires coming out on all sides. This makes it really nice when you're trying to do a really artsy presentation on your installation. Uh, you can keep all the wires formatted nice and uh, grouped together well. The only thing that you'll see on the top is your uh, ports. Uh, these are D2D 2.0 ports. So think of these as USB 2.0 ports um, on a computer. Basically, it's your data to data. These will work all of the um, control units, any of the antennas, the uh, if you wanted to do telematics, you can do that from the, the DSM 550. Um, and then the only other port here is we have a two pin port and that is going to be for applications where you may have to do a key wrap, something like that. Uh, if you actually take this sticker off the top, the sticker's a warning label, so you should read it, um, but it's telling you that you really need to open this up and configure the fuses properly for whatever application you're working on. So when you go to directtext.com and you download um, the information for your vehicle, it's going to have a picture of the brain with the fuses in the proper position. Uh, by changing the fuse position, it changes the polarity of the outputs, so it's very important that you do that so you don't fry any circuits or anything like that inside the car. Um, let's check out some of the other pieces that come with it. Now, this can be a little intimidating uh, for some new installers or people who are just not that familiar with this product. You know, there's a lot of wires to look at, but keep in mind, most of the time when you're gonna use the DS3 um, or DS3 Plus, you're probably going to want to be using a T-Harness. You can certainly do it without it. These will work in older vehicles, stuff like that, but um, they have some really good coverage um, for the T-Harnesses. So a lot of times you're not even going to be using the high current plugs or any of these um, other pieces for a lot of the other accessories. But it does give you a really, like if, you're, if you want to get really creative with it, it gives you a lot of uh, channels that you can change around, a lot of different ways you can install it. Um, and it really does kind of open up the, the possibilities of what you can control with it. If you want to do something funky, make the convertible top open or uh, 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 make a sliding rag move back and forth or, or just anything cool like that. Um, so one of the other cool things that's in here, obviously you get your uh, quick reference guide. The manuals in here are definitely important, but more importantly than that is to go to direct text and get the actual manual that's vehicle specific. That's the one you want to go by. These are great as little references along the way, but those are the ones you want. It does give you a, um, an owner's guide as well. So you have something to actually present the customer with, which is nice because a lot of digital systems do not come with these. So this is really nice to have something that the customer can look at and read on their own time. This thing is really cool. This is unique 
for uh, for directed as far as I know I don't know of any other companies that are doing this but this is the control center so it looks like a normal antenna it is not an antenna at all in fact if you're using remotes you're not going to use this but if you are using three times lock applications it gives you the ability to have an LED on the top when the vehicle is armed um, and it also has a programming button built into the top of that um, that saves you a lot of time. You're not looking for a place to drill an ugly hole for a LED or, or a, a switch of some sort. This is all in one. You got LED and switch right on the plug. This wire that actually uses it, it works right on that normal, remember I said the D2D 2.0 port, works on that same port, plugs into here, and then plugs into the brain on the, uh, on the DS3. Um, so in an application like this where I have some accessories, this one, um, for this particular vehicle, I wanted to use uh, a separate remote versus the three times lock. But you'll notice when I just opened the remote kit, it does not have an antenna wire. The reason for that, the DS3 already comes with it. So you're going to take that off of the control unit and use that to then use your antenna. And the, the antenna then becomes the control unit and the antenna. Very cool stuff from, uh, from Directed. And last but not least in front of me here, I have the T-harness for the vehicle that I'm actually going to show you today. Um, the vehicle I was uh, planning on working on is a 2015 Toyota Tacoma. Um, so not a super difficult vehicle, but, you know, it depends on your skill level, of how long you've been doing it and that kind of thing. But you want to talk about making it easy, T-harness is the way to go. Now, a lot of people... Um, when I talk about T harnesses, give a little pushback from time to time. Well, you know, there's still other wires to hook up, and uh, you know, I can do it just as fast in other ways. Think of this as a, an opportunity to make more money. It doesn't necessarily have to be a um, a time saver, although it can be. Uh, in many cases, it is a time saver. But this is a revenue builder for you. This is something that you can add as an upsell. You can tell the customer, "Hey, I'm not going to tap into." any of your uh, factory ignition wall harnesses or anything like that. I've got plugs that plug right into it. Uh, if it's a lease vehicle and their customer's uh, nervous about returning the lease with wires that are cut into and stuff like that, this is a great solution. So, um, and, and it really does open up the doors to, to uh, you know, maybe the customer wants to keep that unit and move it to the next vehicle. There's probably another T-harness for that vehicle. Um, so again, like I said before, some of the wires can be intimidating, but keep in mind that these T harnesses work on a lot of different applications. So you'll notice here the, the high current ignition wires, uh, that's going to be the ones I'll be using today. Um, uh, but you'll notice here along with that is a separate plug. This would be for one of the push to start vehicles. So these are not going to be used, um, in, in the particular application today. Um, a couple other little wires. Uh, that are on here, most of which I will not be using because I'm only using the DS3 as a remote start today. Um, keep in mind that this is a remote start, is an alarm system. It can be many different things. Uh, it's all in how you program it and what accessories you sell with it. This is a, all a cart type of piece. You can add different things and, and take different things away from uh, from that, which makes it really great for, again, for upselling. You know, if you if you have a customer who, I just wanted a remote start, but, you know, maybe maybe they couldn't afford the alarm right off the bat. Well, they can come back and you can add that on with a very little labor. I mean, you're, you're really just plugging in pieces and mounting sensors and a little bit of programming time. Um, but, you know, the customer doesn't know how much time you have into that too. So it's, it could be a good uh, avenue to, to really uh, bring them back and have them coming back for more. Um, the one I plan on doing today, as soon as I drop that vehicle off, the first thing I'm going to tell them about is the telematics piece. Man, did you know that we can hook this up and have this uh, work right off your cell phone? Awesome upgrade. You know, let's see, he didn't have the, the money to put into it right away, but that's something we could definitely do down the line, and I don't really have to do much more to make it happen. So that's about it. Uh, let's go check it out in the vehicle. Okay, this is the inside of the 15 Tacoma. I'm going to start by taking the underdash down. I did notice that up in the window, there is a aftermarket antenna indicating that there's already some sort of system in here. So even though it's a T-harness install, we're going to have to go a little bit above and beyond and do um, some removal first before we can 
plug and play. So I'm just going to take this apart and I'll you know, 10 mil back there, another one back over here. And most of these are just pops on the rest of this. So uh, I'm going to get in here. And we got a few more 10 mils here to take off this uh, knee bolster piece underneath here. One there, one there. And there's definitely, I can again, you can see that aftermarket stuff. There's somebody had a ground here before, and I see an antenna wire kind of wrapped around some things. So it's good. We'll be able to go in here and uh, kind of clean all that up the new system in nice and neat this is the third one that does the knee bolster underneath and then we're going to take the column shroud off after that um, now to take the column shroud off on these uh, it's usually I usually turn the car on or the vehicle on and then I turn the steering wheel to the side so you can access that screw there and turn it to the other side so you can access the one on this side. Okay, so now the steering wheel shroud is off. Um, I get the underdash down. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the ignition harness here. With that unplugged, you could easily see that, yeah, this is where they were tapped into their ignition wires on the old one. So what I'm gonna do is cut this tape, pull these wires off, clean up all the wires, get it back to stock as much as possible. Uh, one of the main reasons to use a T-harness is to kind of keep all these wires um, from looking like they've been tapped into. Um, so we're going to clean all that up and install the new DS3. After removing all the wires, I, or uh, all the aftermarket wiring that was on there, uh, we're back down to the stock wires. I've inspected all those. They look okay. There's no breaks in them or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and tape them up with some Super 33. Um, and then after that, I'm going to do some Tessa tape on the outside to make this harness look somewhat close to stock again. Um, and that'll give us a good starting point to install the DS3. So I got all those electrical taped and then I put some of the uh, Tessa tape on the outside to clean that harness up so it looks pretty nice back to much more of a stock look. And I'm going to leave that unplugged because obviously we're going to be plugging the uh, the T harness for the, uh, for the directed unit in there. Now earlier I talked about how nice it is that all the wires come out the same side. Uh, with the exception, of course, of the data ports. Um, one of the cool things about that, or reasons that that's cool, is in this case, I was able to fashion a little bit of a bracket here out of an old dash kit I had laying around. Um, and up here in the dash, let's see if I can get the camera in here to show you, um, towards the top of the brake mount, I was able to put a threaded insert in right here. Um, so that will allow me to make an, a nice solid spot for the brain to go. Um, that's going to kind of go right in here like this, and I'll have the brain uh, zip tied to the side of that. Um, so yeah, that should be a, a really nice clean uh, install. Um, you know, we've got all the other wires here tested going up towards the parking brake and the single wires that were for the locks are tested and also for the brake wire that one goes over here um, but we'll kind of i'll point those out a little bit more when it's all put back together um, 
normally I wouldn't even take the fuse box all the way down like this, but uh, the person who installed the old remote start in there uh, had it out in order to mount the brain, so I did have to remove it for that. Um, and then while it was in there, it does look like a nice spot to, to mount that brain there, so I'm going to uh, utilize it. Okay, so with that all plugged in, I've got the red light solid on the unit. That means we're ready to program. I'm going to put my key in, turn it to the run position. It says this could take up to five seconds. Oh, turn turned green right away. I'll shut it off. Take the key out. And we'll give... Okay, so the next step is pairing the remotes. Um, I've got the antenna wire plugged in, and that has the push button on it. Um, what you're going to need to do on these is have your remotes handy right next to your antenna or your programming button. In this case, it's both. Um, we're gonna put the key in the ignition position. So key is now turned on and it's going to be press release, press hold. Okay, you'll see that that flashed and now we're gonna hit the lock button on one of the remotes. Okay, I'm gonna release that. Shut it off. We'll see if that worked for us. So we'll give it a test run now. We're going to hit lock on the remote and see if it learned. And it looks like it did. I'm getting a flash. I'm getting a response from the brain when I hit the button. That's lock. Here's unlock. Just like that. Okay. Okay. So now I've got the brain mounted up all nice and neat. Uh, all the wires are zip tied here. I've done some test to make sure the system works um, all we really have left to do is to run the antenna wire up to the uh, up the a pillar and uh, mount the antenna um, and then if just uh, put back everything back to normal put all the dash back together shroud back on sill plates and uh, we'll be ready to rock okay so i got the dash all back together the antenna is mounted it is ready to rock so we'll just give it one more final test make sure everything's working right and i'll ship it got lock got unlock and let's try remote start sounds like we got a winner wow what a nice system i definitely recommend you give one of those a shot uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to click the like button down below. Um, if you have any ideas for future videos, please leave those in the comments or get in touch with me or one of your inside sales reps. And most importantly, if you want to add one of these to your next order, please give us a call at 1-800-233-7009. Uh, thank you so much for your business. As always, I appreciate it and be safe out there.